Yeah, so first I would like to thank my co-organizers for organizing this meeting. Uh, this is, I must say, it's a really, really nice meeting. Uh, uh, and I especially want to thank Shomvidya and Kavita for doing a lot of the hard work. Okay, so uh, I'll be talking about weather modes in a periodically driven and harmonic chain with, uh, and this is work done with uh, colleagues at ICTS. Uh, so this is work in progress and in fact, a uh, lot of the plots that you'll see were, were produced by Umesh uh, last night. Uh, okay, so this is just for uh, like motivations for the talk. So this is an experiment uh, which looked at non-equilibrium phase transition and driven circuit QED lattice. Uh, this is the paper. So basically here what one has is a, uh, is a it's a one dimensional lattice of uh, formed out of units uh, which are like uh, there's a, a cavity there's a microwave cavity with a single mode uh, and then so that the uh, sort of schematic of this uh, area of uh, uh, qubit uh, where you have, you put in light at one end and you take out light at this other end okay so schematically it looks like this uh, you have this uh, cavities and there's a qubit inside so you can just think of it as some nonlinear uh, quantum os chain of oscillators, okay? And you send light through at one end and you collect it and see what you get out uh, at the other end. So what they saw in this experiment is, okay, so you can change uh, uh, like the drive frequency and the drive amplitude at uh, this end and uh, just look at the output. And uh, so this is frequency and this is the, the amplitude. And this, uh, this is the output uh, plots uh, at, uh, this is a different uh, outputs that you get. So what you find is that as, at a, let's say at a given frequency, when you, uh, you, when you increase the uh, drive amplitude, at some point suddenly the, uh, the output uh, drops down drastically. Okay? So that's like a transition driven by the uh, uh, non equilibrium drive. Okay, so this is the main observation in this experiment. And there were a couple of uh, uh, theory papers which sort of looked at uh, uh, various models to uh, understand this uh, experiment. So, uh, this, so this is one theory paper where, uh, so you, this is the same setup. You have a bunch of uh, sort of quantum oscillators and you set in uh, light at one end and look at the output at the other. So they modeled it uh, by, as a 1D uh, Bose-Hubbard uh, uh, system. So you have some hopping terms, you have some interactions. Uh, so, uh, this is the on-site potential, and then uh, you have uh, pumping at this uh, at uh, the first site. Okay. So uh, I mean, uh, so what they do, uh, you want one can do is sort of a mean field semi-classical analysis of this uh, system, and then uh, in the, if you do that, you just get sort of uh, simple equations, uh, classical uh, di dynamics of a bunch of oscillators. Uh, so this is actually, uh, it's, uh, so this is the bulk particles and these are the boundary particles, the first particle and the last particle, and this is the boundary par uh, bulk particles. So this you can see it's basically like a discrete uh, Schrodinger equation with a nonlinear uh, term. Okay, so it's a discrete nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Uh, and this is the drive term, uh, uh, the uh, force at one end. And uh, uh, okay, and then what they found is that uh, uh, sorry, the, like expectation of uh, alpha is just expectation of a. Let's say right, yeah. Uh, so that's the amplitude at each side of the oscillators, right? So uh, then you're looking at the, so you're feeding at one uh, site one, and you're looking at the output at site n. And what you find is that uh, as you increase your system size, uh, okay. So this is at various values of this driving force p. Uh, you get this sharp transition, okay? So the interesting observations is that, okay, there's a regime where the current stays completely flat, and then there's a regime where the current uh, decays in some, uh, not as one over n, which you would imagine in a diffusive system like this, but at some anomalous way. Okay, so then there's a more recent uh, paper uh, by this people, uh, Prem, Avinav Prem, Virbal Chandani and Shivaji Sondi, where they again uh, looked at a sort of classical uh, model, tried to un uh, which tries to mimic that experiment. Okay, so uh, the classical model is uh, the following: it's a set of uh, nonlinear oscillators uh, and uh, with uh, interaction potential and on-site potential. Okay, so the on-site potential is has a q square, a quadratic, and a q to the power four term, and the interaction is just uh, quadratic. Okay, so it's like uh, 
uh, okay, so it's some coupled oscillators. And uh, so this is the dynamics of the particles in the bulk. And the first particle has a dissipation and a drive. Okay, and the last particle has this dissipation. Okay, so you are feeding in energy at this end, and you are seeing how this transmits. Okay, so uh, I mean, in this, the only dimensionless parameters are uh, basically the uh, this force and uh, this frequency, let's say, and we will set these other parameters to one. And uh, okay, so now this, if you are just looking at the harmonic system, this has some uh, band uh, frequency uh, band, uh, and uh, okay, so now. Uh, what you expect is this is a dynamical system. It should go to some steady state. And we are interested in understanding the steady state properties, right? So, uh, so here you expect that the steady state should carry, carry current. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, what, what is interesting is that you find uh, some phase transitions as you change the driving force. Okay, so that was what was observed in the experiment. And that's what we'll see is also observed here. Okay, so this is again uh, results from this paper where, uh, so this is the current as a function of the driving force, right? And what you find is that, okay, and this is results for two different system size. The green is for a system size 100 and the blue is for system size 500. So as you increase the force, so initially there's this uh, gradual increase of the current. Uh, and then uh, you find that beyond some critical force, it just stays flat. And uh, for the smaller system, it just stays flat for a very long uh, driving force. But for a larger system size, you find that the force suddenly drops and you go to a, uh, and then it decays with increasing force. Okay, uh, so this is again plots at different frequencies. Okay, so the main, uh, most interesting result is that uh, in a, over a range of driving force, you find that the current stays completely constant. Okay, so you drive it harder, but the current doesn't change. And there are these sharp, sharp transitions at these two F1 and F2 forces. Uh, okay, so then uh, what they observed is that this in this regime, the system go, uh, gets into a sort of very periodic state. Okay, it's a breather, uh, uh, it's called a breather mode. And I'll discuss this a bit, what it, the structure of this breather mode. Uh, okay, and, uh, and, uh, and then if you look at uh, the nature of the current, uh, the, the transport in these three regimes, so there's this initial growth regime there's a, a flat regime and then there's this decaying regime. Here it's kind of anomalous transport. If you look, uh, the current scale says one by n to the power, uh, some power 0.5 or something. Uh, in this here, in this regime, it's independent of system size. And in this regime, it decays as one by n, which is like diffusive transport. Okay, so these were observations in this paper. And uh, what we wanted to understand is, uh, okay, so, uh, uh, this is again uh, like something about the breather mode. So I said in this uh, uh, in in this uh, regime, uh, it gets into a periodic state. Okay, so what does the periodic more. state uh, look like? So the periodic state uh, just looks like this. It has the same frequency as the drive frequency, and uh, the amplitude satisfy uh, basically the uh, again uh, the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And uh, you can actually find the, what is the amplitude of the uh, uh, of this breather mode. Okay, so we, uh, I mean, these are the questions we were interested in uh, trying to get a detailed understanding of the breather mode, particularly its uh, stability. And the other question was, what is the effect of temperature on this uh, uh, steady state? Okay, so these are some new results that we have obtained. Uh, so one is that uh, the, I mean, the solution has a slightly different form than what was given in the paper. So there's a phase dependence uh, at different sites. It's not, the, they're not oscillating all at the same uh, phase. There's a phase difference which changes linearly across the chain. Okay, and this phase difference has some interesting uh, frequency dependence. And we can actually compute the steady state current. Uh, I mean, this is the exact form of the steady state current. Uh, and one uh, sort of really interesting result is, okay, so this is the blue curve is what was observed in the paper, where you start from a random initial condition and you find that it, uh, it goes to this uh, breather mode, uh, and sometimes it goes to this uh, chaotic state. Okay, so here it's a chaotic state and this is a periodic state. So this is if you start from initial conditions, but now if you, uh, you can ask, I mean, what is this, the, does the breather bond really vanish or actually is it's there, but it's, it has a smaller basin of attraction. Okay, so that's what we wanted to ask. So what we did was we started with the initial condition very close to the breather mode, and then change the force slowly. And then you can you find is that actually it goes on all the way. Okay, so it, it seems it's stable forever. 
And then what we did is like we started from some state like this and perturbed it a bit. And uh, then uh, we asked what is the strength of the perturbation needed to uh, go to the chaotic state, right? Okay, so uh, we find that actually it stays, uh, it's highly stable. So, uh, okay, so and uh, the uh, other result is uh, for finite temperature. So maybe I'll just tell you at uh, temperature point one, you find that it's still quite, uh, I mean, you still have a sharp transition, okay. Uh, so let me just, uh, there are some other interesting results, but uh, let me summarize. Uh, okay, so, uh, so the one very interesting result is that it looks like there are multiple attractors uh, a breather mode and a chaotic attractor for the same parameter values. And uh, uh, at some value of the force, somehow the uh, domain of attraction becomes finite, and but it remains finite for even very large forces, okay. And uh, okay, so I'll just uh, keep this and take questions. Now we are open for the questions. So in this intermediate regime, uh, what sets the value of the current uh, of that plateau? Uh, uh? Okay, so uh, the current, I mean, uh, the, uh, so we can determine the current it depends on this amplitude of the oscillators, which we have an expression. So we, uh, I mean, uh, we have an analytic expression, or the only thing that we don't know is this dependence of the phase on the, it doesn't depend on the force, but it has a dependence on the driving frequency, which we, uh, which we don't know how to estimate. Why, why does the current go to zero? I go to some saturation value at very large F. At very, no, so it stays saturated for, a, I mean, over a range, right? It uh, it's just stays saturated because it gets into this brother mode. No, after that, so it drops down from the brother mode. Yeah, in this one, uh, or yeah. No, after that, it just go, it will eventually go to zero. I mean, because oh, if you are zero. driving okay, okay. Uh, too uh, very large, then it will, it won't respond. So you have loss uh, only at the first and the last site. Right, yeah. Is that a crucial in, uh, bit for this uh, feature to uh, to be observed or uh, I think also the have loss? first site doesn't matter, you can see, but you need uh, at the other end because otherwise uh, you, you can't have transmission because you need to, to get a heat carrying steady state, you need uh, something to leak out, right? I mean. Yeah, but if I had loss on all sites, uniform loss. Uh, if you are at all sites, then I, uh, okay, then I, I, I am not sure what will happen. I mean, whether the breather is still stable or not, that probably not, I think. Okay. So this current, it does not oscillate, the, the current is a constant? Current is completely, uh, so this is of course that uh, average current, right? Yes, I mean, sir, average current. Yield, right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Okay, let's thank the speaker.